Welcome, weebs, gamers, and nerds alike. It's that time of year again, a month full of spooky, scary costumes, games, shows, movies, and of course, anime. Horror is a difficult genre to really nail down, but in today's list we have 10 anime that managed to do horror surprisingly well. Make sure to subscribe for more geek content, and without further ado, let's dive into our spooky list. Starting off this list, we have Made in Abyss. While this anime may not be your conventional horror, it has some very dark themes and some absolutely grotesque and scary moments. This follows an orphan girl named Rico who decides to become a cave raider so she can find her mom. She discovers a robot boy named Reg and they begin their adventure down into the abyss. It looks all cutesy and fun until the effects of each layer start coming into effect and the monsters start showing up. It starts off tame with you know decompression sickness and nausea and progresses to loss of balance, hallucinations, bleeding from orifices, and of course, you know, losing your humanity. The deeper they get in the abyss, the darker and more horrible things become. The monsters get more and more dangerous and look even more creepy. And then you get to Bondrude, who makes Shao Tucker look like dad of the year. And yes, I mean that. And the Golden City, which to avoid spoilers, is both shocking and depressing seeing how far people will go for their desires, even if it costs everything. This series is, is amazing and downright terrifying and creepy, making it a must watch this Halloween season. Next, following the trend of looks cutesy but is actually horrifically terrifying, we have Higarashi When They Cry. This follows new kid Keichi Mebra, who's settling into his new home of peaceful Hinamizawa village. Making quick friends with the girls from his school, he's arrived in time for the big festival of the year. But something about this isolated town feels off, and his feelings of dread continue to grow, with a gnawing fear that he's right, the dark secrets of this small community start to reveal themselves. This series has so many twists and turns, and you never truly expect where it's going to go, and by god, do some of the killings catch you by surprise, especially with how graphic they are. There are multiple iterations of this series, and they're all pretty good at hooking you in with the fun, relaxing vibes only to shatter that every episode. If you enjoy mystery thriller horror, this should definitely be high up on your list this season. Next, with an unconventional horror show, we have ReZero. Hear me out. Well, yes, at its heart, this is an isekai adventure. What Subaru Natsuki has to go through is nothing but horrifying. While some of his deaths and interactions are relatively tame, there are others that are downright gruesome, and by the halfway point of season two, you see how they break him completely, constantly dying over and over again in order to reach his ideal timeline that has everyone he cares about safe and okay, really takes its toll, and I think the horror elements of this show are implemented in a fantastic way. It doesn't feel forced or out of place, they're all woven in perfectly into the story and help drive forward the plot and characters. This is another one that treads more on the psychological thriller side of horror, but some of the scenes really do hit you in the gut and really stick with you, especially the first time it really dives into its TVMA rating in the first episode. Season 3 is currently airing, so if you haven't watched this yet, this spooky season is a great excuse to get caught up. We're going to keep going with trends on this next one and move on to Summertime Rendering, another show involving Return by Death. This was a shock as there was almost zero advertising for this show, thanks Disney and Disney Jail. It follows Shinpei Aijiro, whose childhood friend Ushiro Kufune died. He returns to his hometown for the first time in two years for the funeral. So his best friend suspects something's off with Ushio's death and that someone could die next. Then a sinister omen is heard as an entire family next door suddenly disappears the following day. Furthermore, Mio implicates seeing a shadow three days before Ushio's death. There's so many twists and turns in this show. As soon as you think you know what's going on, it throws a brand new curveball to keep things fresh. And just like Subaru, Shinpei can also return by death. However, Unlike Subaru, this ability isn't really all powerful. It is pretty tense throughout the entire show and the characters are all pretty well written with believable motives and intentions. The fights are also pretty dang good and it's kind of tragic this show isn't talked about more. While well, yes, it's not necessarily horror, it does have paranormal plots and leans on the mature series themes enough to make it count. Next, we have Helsing Ultimate. You can't really go wrong with your typical monster-themed horror show. 
This has everything you could really want from one. Undead, vampires, Dracula, gore, radical church armies, and of course, vampire evil World War II groups. It follows the Helsing organization as they attempt to protect the world from vampires, while Integra Helsing has an army. It pales into comparison to her three heavy hitters in Walter the Butler, Alucard, and police girl Saris Victoria, who is turned by Alucard. In this, you get to watch the absolute chaotic war that breaks out between Helsing, the Vatican, and Millennium. It checks off all the boxes for a serious but campy show with plenty of action and silly moments to keep you hooked for the whole 10 episode runtime. Next up, we have the Berserk trilogy of movies. If you haven't at least heard of Berserk, it would be kind of surprising as it is highly regarded as one of the best manga of all time. While the 1997 series isn't bad, the Golden Age trilogy of movies is probably the best way to engage in the material in an animation side and see why it's considered one of the best stories out there. The animation isn't great, but it's fine enough to be entertaining. It follows the main character Guts as he goes from wandering mercenary to a member of a group to a captain of a highly renowned mercenary faction. And then the series of downright horrific, disgusting, and heart-wrenching trauma that follows. All of the characters are masterfully written and you really start to grow close to them in the Band of the Hawk. And the almost brother-like relationship that Guts develops with Griffith feels real and his love triangle with Kafka adds so much humanity and realism to the show. It really feels like he starts to get a family. The monsters that show up are terrifying, the art is cool and unique, and the Eclipse is one of the most beautiful yet gut-wrenching sections out there. In order to not really have this video removed, we won't talk about it, but if you know, you know. So if you've ever wanted a Mastercraft on characters, horror, monsters, and storytelling, give these movies a shot. Next, we have Perfect Blue. This is on a lot of people's lists and for good reason. This follows rising pop star Mima, who has quit singing and to pursue a career as an actress and model, but her fans aren't really ready to see her go. Encouraged by her managers, she takes on a recurring role in a popular TV show when suddenly her handlers and collaborators start turning up dead. Harboring feelings of guilt and haunted by visions of her former self, her reality and fantasy meld into a frenzied paranoia. As her stalker closes in, in person and online, the threat he poses is more real than even she knows. This does such an amazing job at making you feel uneasy and uncomfortable, especially with some of the angles they show of the stalker. It also does a great job showing the dangers idols and celebrities face with crazed fans in a dangerous industry and the effects they can have on a person's psyche. Perfect Blue is fantastic at capturing that unsettling nature and paranoia the main character gets and passing it on to the viewer, making it a great psychological horror thriller to watch this spooky season. Next, we have one of the newer shows on this list in Dark Gathering. It had us and others worried it wouldn't be able to hold its creepy factor with its cute CMC, but as other shows on this list have proved, cute won't detract from the horror. After a devastating encounter with a restless spirit, ghost-fearing psychic Keitaro becomes a shut-in to avoid additional spectral catastrophes. However, Keitaro eventually reintegrates into society by getting a part-time job as a tutor to the child prodigy Yayui. Yayui isn't just an academic genius though, she's a talented psychic medium hell-bent on finding her the malevolent spirit behind her mother's disappearance, and she's gravely determined to drag Keitaro into her terrifying world of grotesque supernatural phenomenon. And by god, is it a little messed up, especially with some of the spirits she keeps in dolls. The ghosts in this show were drawn and animated very well, have great unsettling stories, and definitely capture that creepy atmosphere that just makes you shiver. It has a decent number of jump scares to keep you on your toes, and a reasonably likable cast to make this a great paranormal series. Next, we have ZOM 100. This spot was going to go to Uzumaki after the first episode, but then episode 2 happened, and the rest of the series looks bleak. So we're doing a switch up and throwing a horror comedy on here. This follows Akira, who is a wage slave, as many of us are, who after spending years at a soul-crushing company, gets to live his dream as the zombie apocalypse breaks out. His goal is to complete all 100 items on his bucket list before he dies, now that he gets the push that he needs. The first episode was one of the best first episodes in anime, with the shift of color, the music, the breaking through the frame, everything was amazing. The whole story is fun, the side characters are a blast and enjoyable. The animation is pretty dang good and unique. 
All around, this is a fun time and the opening is a banger, not only in music, but the video accompanying it. It was a shame this flew under people's radars because of the delays, but now that it's all out, 1000% watch this this Halloween season. Last on this list, we have The Witch and the Beast. This is another monster thriller that follows Guido, a beast, who's been cursed by a witch and her companion Ashef, a mage, on their journey to find the witch that cursed Guido and kill him. It has a really good, dark, gritty feel to it and look to it, and the animation is fluid and pleasing to look at. The duo acts as investigators as they handle multiple different witch and magical cases. It has plenty of action and gore to keep it engaging, the pacing is very well done, and the case's side characters are well written to help really develop the story and make you feel immersed in the world, especially Fenora and Johan and their necromancy. Well, yes, this is the least horror. This is our list, and I want an excuse to talk about this great show, and so definitely give it a watch. And with that, that wraps up our list of the best spooky anime to watch this Halloween season. Of course, there are plenty of other shows out there, so let us know in the comments what your favorite horror anime is. Make sure to subscribe and check out our other channels on Twitch and TikTok for more geeky goodness. Until the next video, keep on geeking on.